Welcome back to Time by the Tent Podcast. I'm Joy Baird. Next to me is... Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Kevin is the founder and creator of YouTube channel Small Plots. Kevin likes to find small plots in which to plot predominantly to camp, never knowing what kind of small plots he will find. On Small Plots, he'll find hammock camping, tarp camping, even some tent camping. Uh, Kevin camps year round and decides to start chronicling the experience. The goal is generally to start a fire, sit down, crack some frosty suds. He is not a professional camper by any means, but his goal is not to teach, but to have fun in the woods. Welcome to Time by the Tent Podcast, Kevin. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day. And I'll start with this. How did you get into camping? Has it always been something you've done or something you found later on in life? Uh, well, kind of both. I used to do it a bunch as a kid. Uh, my dad was an avid camper uh, throughout his life and kind of passed that to me on as a kid. And I stopped for several years. And then in uh, 2018, I kind of caught the bug again and uh, ne- never looked back. Kind of uh, kind of our uh, Holly was a camper when she grew up. I did hunting and camping back on the farm, and we got away from it with her jobs, and we decided we've got to do something. Otherwise, we're going to go bonkers. So this was a nice way of, of relaxing. It's, and- our, it's our midlife crisis hobby. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the camping, self-camping world, um, self-camping is a popular way to spend the night camping, usually in a place that you should not be. And sometimes it does not go as planned. You have camp- camped where a body was found. You caught someone hiding in the woods, have nearly gotten caught yourself. We cannot imagine this is a very fun way to spend the night. Um, do you recommend this level of camping? And I'm very curious, why? Why do you self-camp? Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, and every time we're watching self-camping, I'm like... This can't end well. Yeah. <laughs> so very curious about those two questions. All right, well, I'll answer the why first, um, and the answer may surprise you. Um, it's uh, very convenient. That's, you know, that's about, that's that's a big reason. I can walk to these camps. I, right. I live in the city, and I can just, like, leave my apartment and walk to these camps and film a video, and it's, 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 it's very convenient. If I'm going to go out and film a, a video in, like, a uh, nearby forest or something like that, generally it's, like, an hour minimum to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, I don't know, that, that's, that's part of the why. It's, it, is, it is fun. I do find it exciting sometimes. Um, and it is, it is it, it's, believe it or not, it can, it can, be, it can be relaxing. You know, it, it may not seem like it is all the time, but it could definitely be relaxing. Um, yeah, any any amount of nature sometimes is just good to get out in, even if it's like a tiny little, you know, the woods right next to an expressway. Right. Um, so, yeah, that, I guess that, that hopefully that answers uh, that question. And as for uh, recommending it, no, I do not <laughs> recommend it. I, do not, I, do not, I cannot say that it's for everybody. Also, if I recommend it and, like, people go and do it and then, like, it's going to get, you know, too many people doing it and then they're going to start cracking down and then I can't do it anymore. So, no, get out of here. Go go camp regularly. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're gatekeeping the stealth camping, correct? I'm absolutely <laughs> Perfect. gatekeeping Stealth right. camping, yeah. <laughs> and, and I imagine those who self, stealth camp that are not on YouTube and just do it for you know the thrill, it's a lot easier than people like you and Steve Wallace and others who are documenting this and getting the shots and trying to be quiet and not expose yourself to people who are passing by. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, in some of your stealth camping uh, videos, you have a fire, Kevin. And now my understanding of stealth camping is not to say, hey, here's a fire. Everybody look at me. What's the purpose or why do you have a fire when you're stealth camping in some instances? <laughs> well, you're absolutely right, Joey. It's not it's not stealthy at all. It's, it's very <laughs> unstealthy. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beacon. But uh, I do, I, I, uh, why I have it is, is manifold. Mainly I just like having a fire. Um, I just, uh, it's, just, it's kind of a nice thing to do. Often I need it to cook, not all the time, but often. Um, and I only ever do it if I'm pretty sure I can get away with it. Um, like if, if the brush is thick enough 
or if uh, if I'm far enough away from wherever I'm, uh, I'm camping near, like to where they wouldn't see it or would only see it if they stared directly at mm-hmm. it. Um, and also sometimes, depending on the time of year, I just need it for heat to, to survive. It gets pretty cold out there in the winter. Um, and so that there's, I guess that's, that's basically why, but you're, you know, it's not stealthy at all. It's cer- certainly not. <laughs> well, a, camp- a campfire is, gives a peace of mind, you know, the, the illusion to keep the boogeyman away, those type of thoughts. And, and right. it's, it's, it's relaxing whether it's stealthy or not. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I enjoy a good campfire. Um, I know there's different types of campers out there to where people, I've talked to campers who like never even consider having a campfire. And um, that's like that's like so crazy to me. Yeah, that, I love that's not camp camping. Why, why camp if you can't have a fire? Right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> One of your biggest annoyances, as Holly and mine are, is when campers, uh, you go to a campsite and a location of a previous camper, and I use this word lightly, they left some trash around uh, and they didn't clean up after themselves. Do you have, in addition to the trash being left there, any other pet peeves when it comes to camping and going where somebody else has already camped? Um, yeah, well, yeah, the trash, trash is definitely a big one. Um, especially when I'm in like the back country and people like leave stuff like miles from civilization. When I'm in the city, it's just, you know, it probably just blows there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but as as far as other stuff, um, I, this isn't really, um, anything anyone can do anything about, but I really hate uh, I, I don't know what people call them regionally. I call them prickers. Some people call them stickers. They just thorn bushes. Just thorns. And they're a pet peeve of mine. I hate them. They're always they're always in the perfect place to get you. I've I've had many run ins with thorns, and I know nobody can do anything about this. It's just the way nature is. Sometimes there are thorns, uh, but it's I hate them. I I, I, them. I, I, I so I guess I'd count thorns. As a pet peeve, also the wind when you're trying to set up. Right. Yeah. Other, than that, other than that, it's you know very enjoyable. <laughs> well, and and you and your uh, you've done co videos with Sam Banana and and many other YouTubers in the camping world. I, and I guess, and I don't know this for a fact, that Steve Walls kind of started this. If you go somewhere and you see trash, bring as much out as you can to make it nicer for the next person. I don't know if Steve started that, but it seemed like he did it and then everybody else kind of followed in his suit. A good thing to to have, you know, represent. Uh, Sure. Yeah, I I do it when I I take it out when I can, but often I'm I'm hoofing it and I don't have like space or bags to, you know, I wish I could take everything. Um, But if there's like, I'll definitely like there's some cans or something nearby. I'll stomp on them and just throw throw them in my my garbage bag that I have for my for my stuff. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely a good practice. It's a shame uh, that it even has to be done, but I guess you know it is what it is. Absolutely. So you have teamed up a little bit with with camping with Sam Bananas um, on your camping trips. We are curious about the banana flask, taking a nip off the old banana flask, and and if you could give us any insight on that. Um, just like where, it, yeah, where, where, the origination it of it, yeah, the origination about it, and then did you adopt it or did he start it and said, hey, we should do this together? How did how does that story go? Well, I I, uh, I think he just started doing it because of his Sam Bananas name. Um, I, I don't know. You'll have to ask him about the, the origin of it. But um, back when uh, uh, when I first started Small Plots, uh, Sam and I were, like, very similarly sized channels. I think I was actually, like, a, he, he had, I had, like, 700, and he had, like, 400 or so, something like that. Like, we were real small. And uh, it was, like... He, I saw that he had the banana flask in his video, and he, uh, I, I kind of like, I found one on Amazon, and so I, I, every once in a while, bust it out and give him a little shout out, um, and then of course when we go camping together, I have to bring it, and then we can do the little nip off the old banana flask together, and it's a magical moment. For for people who watch you to camp or watch you camp in and, and in a twenty minute video and, and I know how we produce, but I'm asking you from a production standpoint, out of twenty minutes that we see on YouTube, how much content is not even used? How many hours potentially of content do you not even use that you just take the best of the best? 
Oh, uh, well, it definitely depends. And the more I make videos, the better I get at cutting out the fat while I'm filming. Mm-hmm. You know, like my earlier videos, definitely, I definitely cut a lot more out than I cut out on my more recent stuff. But I, I do cut like a ton out, like still, like even like every shot I have, like of just nothing is usually like 10 or 15 seconds, but there's like three seconds in the video, you know, stuff like that. Most of it's B-roll. Like I cut, you know, B-roll. Sometimes I just ramble too much and I'll have to cut some of that out. Like that's a big part of what I cut out. Uh, it's yeah, a fair amount. Definitely. It's, it's, I don't think I've ever just dragged all the clips in the timeline and just been like, all right, perfect. (laughs) Well, for me, camping the videography portion is just as somewhat more as a relaxing as the actual camping because you're kind of telling a story and you're camping so you're kind of doing fun two fun things at one time Uh, yeah absolutely yeah no i uh and sometimes i'll even be up to the wire so i'll get home from camp i always post Tuesday nights and I'll go camping like Monday night and then get back and then edit all day and like get right under the wire for the 630 deadline. <laughs> it's uh that, that that isn't the relaxing version of it. No. But, uh, that's not what I do all this at the norm anymore. I, I used to do that way more often. I don't do that hardly ever anymore. It just became too much. <laughs> but but you've done worse things and had less enjoyment. So I guess that yeah. you, oh, can, yeah, you can look absolutely. at it that way. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I definitely, uh, I definitely like editing. It's it's a, it's a fun fun. Ex- it, not only do you get to go and kind of like relive the trip in that way, it's just kind of nice to like put it together in a in a coherent manner, I guess. And see things that you didn't know that you filmed or was behind you or shots that you didn't know. And oh, I got that in the shot. That's neat. Oh yeah, I just recently on my uh, recent trip with Sam Bananas, we had set up our cameras to do like a walking shot. And a snake crawled in front of my camera on the ground, and I didn't realize I got it until um, e- until I exported the video, even because I didn't. I just still didn't even catch it in editing. I, when I watched it on YouTube later, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> I was pumped. <laughs> so, in your YouTube camping adventures, have you ever gone to camp and you were going to film, and then you're like, "You know what? I'm not feeling this. I'm just not going to film. Or I'm just not going to stay." Um, has this ever happened to you and what was the reasoning for it? Uh, I've never bailed, but I have had to move. Um, like, I, like you mentioned earlier, like there was a time when I got to a spot, uh, and I was like looking around and I scared somebody off in the woods. <laughs> I decided not to stay there. Uh, but then I went to, to another spot um, and I've never bailed because of weather, because that's what people love to watch. Like those are the best viewed videos of when you're in the worst weather. Right. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta do that, even if it's uncomfortable. Which I honestly like love camping in bad weather. It's kind of fun. <laughs> well, whenever you camped near where that deceased body was found, you didn't know that right away. That was like after the fact that you got home and saw it on the news. Is that how that transpired? Oh no! I knew oh, okay. they had. Uh, well, I I was planning on um, camping in that area anyway, and that was just like I was trying to think of a reason, like how, what to like categorize the video okay. as. You know, like what is the point? What's the point? I guess. And then I was like, oh, perfect! They just found a body there recently. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that might play. <laughs> Uh, is there a place that you you are willing to say, or at least in your mind, say that in your camping career, if I could just camp there or camp in this way, my career would be complete? Hmm. You know, I uh, I think like I don't know. I really like camping in like weird places. I would love to camp like in a big cave. Like a cave that's like big enough to where I could have like a fire in okay. the cave and like kind of like caveman it up. I think that would be really cool. Or like, or even like a big sewer 
like a, like a like a sewer or an abandoned subway station in mm. New York or something like something like that. I think I would love love to camp. Uh, I probably wouldn't be able to have a fire in the abandoned subway station <laughs> or sewer, uh, but <laughs> but uh, it's I think so, something like that. I would I I, I got to do one of these days. But uh, the, the search continues for where that would be. I guess. <laughs> uh, before we ask you how our listeners can find you, who are some of your influences on YouTube that you watch and go, hey? I like the way he camps. I'm going to take that technique. Is there certain people that you just gravitate toward that you you, you got to watch every week if they post? Um, you know, I kind of don't watch camping videos anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm t- I'm too like ingrained in you know my own camping videos and like trying to like have my own voice and style and stuff. And I try not to. Uh, get caught up in you know what other people are doing. So I don't want like any cross contamination. Right. I guess. Right. Uh, I do. I do still watch uh, Steve Wallace um, on occasion, and I watch uh, Sam Bananas whenever mm-hmm. he puts out a video. And then a couple of the like the Self Camping Alliance guys, like Squid. I'll, I'll catch sometimes. Uh, Tony from Random Adventures 2.0. I'll catch sometimes. Um, but, uh, other than that, like any of like the big campers or anything like that, like I haven't watched the Joe Robinette in a while. I haven't watched Matthew Poza in a while, but I used to love those guys a lot. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just too, too much. You know, I can't, I can't make and watch camping yeah. videos. There's so, so much, so much camping video in my life. I got other stuff to do. <laughs> if they would make 30 hours in a day, that would help a lot of us out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always wish you could like just pause time yeah. and just get done in the void of existence and then like unpause and be like, all yeah. right, let's just move on. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So we've really enjoyed having you on the program. How can our listeners find you on YouTube? Uh, yeah, I'm um, just YouTube small plots or uh, small plots on Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's, those are, that's, those are, those are the places, mostly YouTube, Instagram is just kind of like, you know, supplemental to, mm-hmm. to the YouTube channel uh, post every Tuesday at six thirty. most Tuesdays, most Tuesdays. I miss one every now and then life gets in the way, things get busy, you know, whatever. It's tough to put out a weekly vid. Um, it's so it's uh, most Tuesdays at six thirty PM Eastern time. Uh, that's when the small plots drop, and that's when you can find me. Well, Kevin, we thank you for the time and the information and the education behind your videos and your YouTube channel. Thank you very much for that. Hey, guys, thanks so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Absolutely. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.